So we've created our get instance uh, static method, and that's just, like I said, creating the um, instance of itself and passing that back. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is actually set up the connect uh, method. And this is going to be function connect. And we're passing in, uh, whoops, closed it on me. Um, host, user, password, and DB name. And in, whoops, inside this method, we're going to set this dot host equal to host. This dot user equal to user. This dot pass. And I, I say dot for this. I'm, I'm used to dot net. Um, terminology where they use a dot for for accessing uh, attributes and and methods and stuff um, but it works the same uh, and then we'll just use, set that to password and this dot DB name equal to DB name and what this is doing is it's setting these variables up here inside the class to whatever we're passing in here and then the last thing we're going to do is this connection is equal to mysql i underscore connect and this dot host so we're passing in our host this dot user oops this dot password and this dot db name and mysql i is just a um, a better version of the MySQL connection. Um, it's object oriented or are there are options for object oriented um, retur uh, result ret uh, returns and it's if I remember correctly it's better uh, managed as far as resources go. They, they uh, rework some code and overall it, it's just better for accessing stuff. Um, so next we're going to do our uh, do query so this whatever we're passing in for a SQL command is going to get run and our uh, results and the number of rows that are get, that get affected are going to be set through this um, so we'll do public so it's accessible anywhere function do query all sign SQL so we're passing in our SQL statement this results equals my sequel whoops my sequel i underscore query and you have to pass in the active connection so this dot connection and you're passing in your sequel statement um, you can also if you don't want to use my sequel i you can just do the regular my sequel connect and the the uh, associated methods that go along with that um, I just it, it's easier for me um, to stick with this I've gotten used to it and like I said it's a it's a little bit more um, well I, I'd say it, it's better um, but do you stick to whatever you're comfortable with and then we set the number of rows equal to this results num rows so the results that get passed back has a num rows object or a, a num rows um, variable associated with it and we're just setting the num rows for our database class itself to that and the last piece is public oops public function load object list and this one I don't think I actually use this in any of my um, any of my examples that I showed you guys, but oh, just gonna finish that. Um, what this would do is it would take um, it would take your results that you get back and it would load it up into um, either a an array, uh, an associative array, or you can do it as um, an, an object. So each thing gets passed back as an object. Um, but there's just, I'm just going to do it as an associative array, uh, just because it would it makes the most sense with the way I have uh, my active record stuff set up. So if 
oops, can't type tonight, of this result. Still something I haven't gotten used to. Eclipse always puts in or finishes those uh, those curly braces for me. I'm used to Dreamweaver, but I wanted to use this because it's it's free and I use it on stuff that I don't have Dreamweaver. So, um, so if there are any results, the object is going to get set to my SQL I fetch whoops ASOC and we're passing in this results and we're just going to pass that object back so I'm going to save that I'm going to pause the video first alright so that finishes our database class object um, the next thing that we're going to do is create our class or our table class and what this is, is this is going to be our base class and every uh, table object that we create is going to extend off of this and it's going to set it's going to have the basic uh, code that we're going to run so you're really not going to have to do anything once you get this set up aside from extend the class and assign your variables um, so I'm going to create a new file so I'm going to right click new PHP file I'm going to do table.class.php and click finish so first thing I'm going to do is close this PHP tag. I always forget to do that and it just drives me nuts as I go back through my code. Um, but I'm going to do class table, create my curly bracket, protected ID is equal to null. And the reason why I'm using protected is when I extend this, I want to still have access to my ID variable. If I were to use private, then anything that extends table would not have access to it. Um, so it's it's kind of it, it is important to use uh, protected for your ID, since everything's going to have an ID. And protect, whoops, protected. And we're going to give our table name, and we're just going to set that to null. Since this is kind of an abstract class, we're not really it's not meant to be instantiated. We're just going to uh, extend it. I could theoretically uh, type in abstract out front of the class, but I'm just going to leave it this way. This is how I created it, so I'm not going to change anything. I don't want to break any of my code right now while I'm doing this video. So um, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to create our constructor. And we're not going to create anything when we create when we construct the object. Um, so I I don't believe uh, I don't think I'm I'm actually using another constructor in my other classes. So this is perfectly fine. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the bind function or the bind method. And what this is going to do, like I said before, is going to take an associative array that I'm passing in and it's going to assign the variables or the keys. Um, in that associative array to the matching variables in our class. So I'm just going to do oops, function bind data and inside this for each variable, so each data piece as key oops, dollar sign value so I'm assigning it to a key value pair. Um, so each piece of data that gets passed in, so if I go back over, open what I had over here before, if I look at this, so I have F name and Joe, that's one key value pair. This is the key, F name is the key, Joe is the value. So I'm gonna close that. Um, but once we have that set up, then we just go and assign this dollar sign key so we're, we have actually a, a dynamic um, key name or variable name and we're just assigning that value and that's it for that method that's actually pretty simple so the next thing I'm going to do is function load and we're passing in an ID 
and I'm going to run short. I'm going to go into a third video, so bear with me. Um, function ID load, and then this dot ID is equal to whatever we pass in. Now we want to create an ob or uh, an instance of the database object. If we're creating this outside of our class, excuse me, what's going to happen is if it's already been instantiated, it's not. It's going to pass back that that one that was created, uh, providing it was done through the singleton uh, singleton data. I uh, can't even talk. Design pattern. Um, so we'll do database get instance and it's just going to pass back that database object like we wanted it to and SQL equals this dot build query and we're going to be loading something so we're just passing in a string value uh, or a string variable of what we want to do um, and this is, we're going to be creating this in a second the uh, the build query so and then next we want to do database object dot do query and we'll do SQL and if you remember correctly over here we have our do query which is just going to be running our query statement and it's going to be returning the results so we'll do a do query and then we want to create a row object based on that so we're going to be do db whoops dbo load object list so we're getting the list of all of those uh, returned values that we got from the database and then for each of those and I know I'm flying through this and I apologize but I don't want to take too long on um, too many videos because I did that with a couple of them and I just I, I think it just drags on so I just want to keep it short and sweet or as sweet as it can be so for each of these rows that gets passed at, passed back. And remember, we're passing back an associative array. So we're getting a key and a value pair. So for each of those, we're going to, if key is equal to ID, so if the key for that particular uh, entry in the array is ID, we want to skip over it. So we'll do continue. Otherwise, this key is equal to value. So whatever the field is that we're getting back from the database, we want to assign the variable in the table object, whatever that value is that we're getting back from the database. So that is actually it for our load object. And the next one is, I'm actually going to skip over the store. Uh, I take that back. I'm going to do function store. It's a really short one. So, and what this is doing is this is supposed to write whatever. Um, what it's supposed to save whatever our uh, object is to the data to the database. So. DBO equals database get instance SQL equals this oops this dot build query query store so we want to store it and DBO can't type tonight do query and we're passing in our SQL and that's it for our store so that's just going to save it to the database and the next thing is protected function build, whoops, build query and whatever we're passing in for a task so if we're, we want to store the information we're storing it if we want to load it, load it we're passing in load All right, so the build query is actually a little on the confusing side, I should say, um, just because of the, the amount of nested if statements that I have here, and there's a couple of things that I'm skipping over. Excuse me. Um, so I'm just going to go into this. I'm going to dive right into it, and, well, I'm going to stop this video. So.